All right, guys, it's Brandon, and I have solved the puzzle, all right? If you open up the oil cap on a C8 Z06, you'll notice something unique. There is a ball. There's a ball down there. And you say, well, who cares? There's a ball down there. Well, if you remember the C7 Z06s and C7s, there wasn't a ball. You could see down to the bottom of the oil tank. With the C8 Stingrays, there's also not a ball to the best of my knowledge. We've looked in it, there's no ball, okay? So you say, okay, well, who cares? What's the ball for, you ask? Well, normally that ball is for when you flip something over upside down, it's there to catch it so that there's not a problem. But again, the C6s and C7s didn't have the ball because it has an airtight cap, right? So we have the cap, screws on there, it's airtight. So why on earth did General Motors put that ball on the C8 Z06? Well, guys, that prevents a customer and a technician from being able to stick a camera down into the oil tank to see that there is sludge in the bottom of the oil tank. And the reason why sludge in the bottom of the oil tank is so important to know about is because there's water in the gasoline and the way that this fuel system works, as we've explained in the previous videos, the water and the oil, excuse me, the water and the gasoline get split at the Y because this has two high side pumps and the water continues to re-coalesce with its like water, the water ethanol re-coalesces and the gasoline goes the other way. So whereas a normal car has the water ethanol that gets in fuel, it happens constantly when you have dew, dew or uh, condensation or whatever it is, or bad gas at a gas station, normal cars have one low side fuel pump and one high side fuel pump if they even have a high side fuel pump. And that's fine because the low side fuel pump picks up the, uh, picks up a little bit of water ethanol, picks up a little bit of gas, picks up a little bit of water ethanol, picks up a little bit of gas. It's constantly getting stirred up in your tank as you drive down the road. And with little pockets of the water ethanol into one of the cylinders at random, it's not a problem. The engine continues to operate. What this engine does that's unique is since it has the two high side pumps, there is a fork in the low side fuel line. So it has one low side pump, and then there's a fork that goes to the two high side pumps. Well, at that fork, when you're just idling, the fuel and the water ethanol, which are coming up in globs, they're not moving very quickly because the engine isn't consuming much fuel. And so what happens is at that Y, which is pressurized at 70 PSI, at that Y, the water ethanol continues to recoalesce with other like wa water ethanol, which is going to be one side of the Y. The gasoline continues to recoalesce with the gasoline, which is also gonna be the other side of the Y on average. Now that might flip back and forth, but in, in general, it's recoalescing the water ethanol to one side. So now you have one bank that's water ethanol uh, heavy compared to the other bank. What happens is the wideband uh, sensors are detecting that that's that. Okay, now uh, understand something else about the fuel system. The injectors are opening for a certain amount of time, okay? And that certain amount of time, if now there's water ethanol instead of just gasoline, there's gonna be less gas for that combustion cycle because the water ethanol takes up time through the injector. At that point, the wide band on that, on that bank, is on that exhaust bank, is going to actually probably detect that the car is running lean because there's not enough gas that's being burnt. And so what happens is once that hasn't been burnt and it's running lean, that computer orders that side to run even richer, which they open up the duration of how much the injectors are uh, letting fuel in, but they're not just letting fuel in, they're letting the water methanol in also. So the water methanol is then washing down the cylinder walls because it does not ignite. Anybody who's ever owned a turbo supercharged car before that got it done aftermarket, you know that water methanol is not a fuel, it's a coolant for the charge. Well, in this case, you have a huge amount of water methanol coming into only one bank that's now being ordered to run richer with durations of fuel opening. And what that does is that water methanol washes down the cylinders. That water methanol goes into the crankcase. It combines with the oil. It turns the oil into gelatin. 
Now here's the thing, anybody who knows about the LT6 knows that at the bottom of the LT6 crankcase, there's nowhere for the oil to set. The crank literally windages, it, it literally moves the oil to the scavenger pumps. So the scavenge pumps then pump the oil back to the tank. So the sludge is going to exist at the bottom of the tank, but there's just one problem for us civilians and us mechanics. Again, you can check, you can drain the oil on your car, but you can't see down into the bottom of the tank because General Motors conveniently put a check ball there so that we can't see the bottom of the tank. And instead, if your engine has any issues, if your engine blows, you are to put this engine on a crate and send it back to General Motors and don't touch a thing. We, the civilians and mechanics, cannot remove the oil tank from the engine without dropping the entire engine from the car. So no one can see what's in the bottom of that tank unless they drop the engine from the car and they take the oil tank off the engine against General Motors orders. However, as we discovered the other day, we can fit a fish tank hose down through here, an air hose. So I've realized that we can actually fit a, a boroscope down through this port. And if we can get that boroscope down through that port, that should allow us to be able to see the sludge in the bottom General Motors knows damn well this is an issue. The solution is you have two low side pumps with an independent line to each of the high side pumps. That way there's no more Y. That way as the low side pumps pick up the uh, fuel and water at random, it also gets distributed to the cylinders at random like a normal car does. The Y is the problem. The single low side pump with a Y to the two high side pumps is the problem. General Motors is likely going to be ordered to recall these cars and put two low side pumps and put two independent feed lines up to the two high side pumps because that would solve the issue. I have a feeling that these cars are going to end up getting stop sailed soon. So um, the next step is we've got to figure out how to take a look at the bottom of the tank and of course General Motors wants you to believe that you got to drop the whole engine to get that tank off of there. When in reality, I think we can get a boroscope through here if we get a thin enough boroscope. So there's a little update for you. Um, can you hit the unlock button on a Stingray outside? I appreciate you.